يقول راجع فوي رب سامعي محمد بن الجزاري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا ارحم الراحمين oh Allah teach us what benefit us increase us in knowledge in good morals and in good deeds ya Allah al-alamin Allah muslim wa sifri wa jami'i wa sifri wa sifri wa sifri we continue by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings of this poem and this series of classes explaining منظومة المقدمة فيما يجب على قارئ القرآن أن يعلمه من نظم إمام الحفاظ وحجة القراء سيدنا الإمام محمد بن الجزري رحمه الله تعالى We are still in the section of تجويد or باب التجويد which is the fourth section or the الباب الرابع في هذه لهذه المنظومة. Last time we talked about اللحن الجلي واللحن الخفي. Isn't that the last thing we covered? Yeah. What is the last thing you wrote? اللحن الجلي واللحن الخفي, right? Uh, so this section starts with what? والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يجود من لم يصحح القرآن آثم. I'm gonna ask you. Is it correct to say مَنْ لَمْ يُجَوِّدِ الْقُرَانَ And why Sheikh Ayman Suwayd in his تحقيق means in his work on this poem uh, he chose مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحْ instead of مَنْ لَمْ يُجَوِّدِ I'm going to ask you about this inshallah مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ آثِمُ Why? لِأَنَّهُ بِهِ الْإِلَاهُ أَنْزَلَ وَهَكَذَا مِنْهُ إِلَيْنَا وَصَلَ وهو أيضا حلية التلاوة وزينة الأداء وهو أيضا حل وهو أيضا حلية التلاوة وزينة الأداء والقراءة وهو إعطاء الحروف حقها من كل صفة ومستحقها ورد كل واحد لأصله واللفظ في نظيره كمثله right did I make a mistake وهو إعطاء الحروف حقها وهو أيضا حلية التلاوة وزينة الأداء والقراءة وهو إعطاء الحروف حقها من كل صفة ومستحقها ورد كل واحد لأصله واللفظ في نظيره كمثله مكملا من غير ما تكلفي باللطف في النطق بلا تعسف وليس بينه وبين تركه الا رياضة بهم بفكه. So uh, this is line 27 which is والاخذ بالتجويد we're done with it حكم لازم من لم يصحح القران اثم. Now line or verse 28. So the first and the first verse he said والاخذ بالتجويد means taking up taking Mean, uh, applying, applying tajweed, implementing tajweed is necessary and, and mandatory. And then he says, whoever does not correct what? He said, مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ uh, Not the one who doesn't correct the Qur'an, no. The one who doesn't, what? So there's something implied here, right? Means the one who doesn't correct his recitation of the Quran is a sinner. Is a sinner. But what type? What, who? What does that apply? Who does that apply to? I gave you a short 
sentence. Who can remind us? Hmm? Sister? The one who doesn't correct his recitation of the Quran is a sinner. Means who? What in particular? You, get, you were here, right? I gave you a sentence. What is it, sister? Her neighbor. I gave you a sentence to summarize. We said, the one who makes a mistake that changes the meaning or the i'rab. Right? The one who changes the one who changes the meaning. When you change the i'rab, you change the meaning. Okay? So whoever does not correct his recitation of the Quran by this is what I told you to write. I remember by avoiding the mistakes that change the meaning. Tamam? Now, what are the details? We explain the details in, in the whole class. What are the rules that a Muslim should learn? And here, uh, from the proofs that the scholars mentioned, there is a hadith from Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud narrated by Imam Tawrani in his Mu'jam, the Mu'jam al Kabir. Uh, Imam Tawrani has three famous ma'ajim or books of hadith. Al Kabir, Wal Awsat, Wal Sagir. The small and the medium and the large Mu'jam. Three books of hadith, of hadith very famous. In his Mu'jam al Kabir, he said, Al Mu'jam al Kabir, he said, uh, he narrated from Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that he heard someone saying, he heard someone reading the ayah, إِنَّ الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ but the person he was reading it, he read it this way. He said, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Did I make any mistake in the meaning? إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Any change in the meaning from the, what you know? There isn't any change. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud, رضي الله عنه, look what he said. He said, no. مَا هَكَذَا أَقْرَأَنِيهَا النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet ﷺ did not teach me this ayah this way. He said, how did he, how did he teach you this ayah? So Sayyidina Allah Mas'ud, he read it. He said, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ So he stretched لِلْفُقَرَاءِ That doesn't change the meaning in any way. In any way. So this is, Sayyidina Abdullah Mas'ud is of the Sahaba who are in the Sanad, in the Ijazat, in many of the Ijazat of the, Quran, of the Holy Quran. So you can see how Sayyidina Abdullah Mas'ud said, no, you should read it like the Prophet ﷺ read it, even though it doesn't change the meaning. So those sheikhs who say, no, no, you don't have to learn these rules, you don't have, they have to quit this, right? They have to... Encourage people to read the Quran like the Prophet ﷺ, as Allah revealed it, right? As we mentioned last time in the hadith. So this is one of the proofs Imam Ibn al-Jazari mentioned this hadith. Uh, now, why, why is it necessary to learn these rules? Why? لِأَنَّهُ Right, Ya Shaykh? Verse 28 here. لأنه به الإله أنزل وهكذا منه إلينا وصل لأنه means because لأنه because now I'm gonna tell you the meanings word by word the meanings of this verse word by word then we will go to the detail لأنه means because the matter is okay because the matter is لأنه به Bihi means with it, with it. Who can, who knows with what? Okay, let me continue, then you should tell me. Bihi al-ilahu, you know, ilah, the God, right? The one who is worthy of worship. Al-ma'budu bihaq, the one who is truly and only worthy of worship. The only one and who is truly worthy of worship and unconditional obedience and submission. Al-ilah anzala, revealed, revealed, sent down, if you want to be literal, sent down. 
because you know the Quran was in Allah al Mahfud in the sacred tablet in the heavens, and Allah revealed it, brought it down to the house of glory in the lower heaven. Right, as Sayyidina Allah ibn Abbas said, and this is the meaning of we have revealed it or sent it down in the night of honor, fi Laylatul Qadr. This is what it means. The Quran was revealed in how many years, guys? Huh? In how many years the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? All of his prophetic life, 23 years, right? 13 in Mecca and 10 in Al Madina Al Munawwar, right? Peace and blessings upon the one who is residing it. So, right, Ya Shaykh? Uh, so, the Holy Quran was revealed over how many years, guys? 23 years. This is ABC for Quran students, huh? ABC. And this is one of the reasons, Ya Sister, we're going to mention this in details. This is one of the reasons that made the Muslims learn the Quran very well and memorize it very well. Letter by letter. Why? 23 years. Right? It was revealed over 23 years. It was not like the Torah, just one bullet, right? No, it was revealed over 23 years. And let me tell you from now also, since we talked about this. One of the main reasons also, because we're going to talk how, how was the Qur'an preserved. How was the Qur'an and how has the Qur'an been preserved in its original and authentic version. Unlike all the other heavenly revealed scriptures. One of the main reasons is that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His wisdom, He knew, He knew that if, if He will uh, give uh, he knew that this holy book will be the last book. So he guaranteed and swore in the Holy Quran to do what? To preserve it. Which ayah, which surah? 15.9. Remember this. Surah Al-Hijr, ayah 9. 15.9. First page, Surah Al-Hijr, right? Inna. Inna. What's the ayah? If you look at this ayah and you analyze it, you will see how many types of emphases are there. Inna, not I, not inni, he said inna, this is the royal we, the royal we, that some people they don't have it in their language, so they think, oh, see, your God is saying, talking in the plural, so he is three. God is three. Maybe they are plural. We tell him, you need to learn some literature. Some literature in English and in Arabic and maybe some other languages. Because the kings, this is how they talk about themselves. They say, we have made a command. Right? To honor themselves. And Allah is the king of kings. Allah is the only real king. So he says, Inna surely we and he didn't say nahnu what did he say inna first this is for emphasis surely definitely inna nahnu then he says this is the fasl li you could have said inna nazzalna right isn't there in the Quran inna anzalna alayka al kitab right but he said inna surely we then he said nahnu we this is called ضمير فصل للتوكيد for emphasis. نحن نزلنا again plural, not plural. This is the royal pronoun. This is the royal we we have revealed. So surely we have revealed. إن نحن نزلنا ذكر this reminder, this book, this Quran. وإن again. Surely we, wa inna lahu lahafidhun. And I swear, lahafidhun. He did not say hafidhun. He said lahafidhun. This is lam muti al qasam. Lahafidhun means Allah is swearing that surely, definitely, we will absolutely preserve it. Why this particular ayah? Look all of these types of emphases in it. 
Because he did subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will do it. And he never breaks his promises. How did he do that? That's what we're going to mention today. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve the Quran? Because he promised. How did he do that promise? He blessed the Muslims with a lot of tools and let's say mechanisms or ways to preserve this book. And he did not leave the book to ourselves. If he did, we would have lost it like the Jews and Christians lost their books. Means they had it distorted and changed. And this is what they themselves admit. And if someone doesn't believe this, you, he can come and we can show him. We can show him five different Bibles in English and in Spanish. And we can show him there's a verse here that is not here. There's a verse in this Bible that is not here. Not any verse, not any verse. The only verse, that's what I figured out, that's what I found during my detention. The only verse that talks about the Trinity in the Bible was added almost 1,000 years after Jesus, peace be upon him. 1,000 years. That's not what I say. One of the versions that I have, it says this. So I would show those people, look this, can you bring me only one verse about Trinity in the Bible? Only one verse. The Bible is, is almost five times more or bigger than the Quran. Five times. I told him, one of the brothers that he was a pastor. I told him, bring me one verse about Trinity. He said, I will, I will, I will look. Trinity is a main belief in Christianity. So, if you tell a Muslim, tell me like one ayah about that Allah is one. Our little kids, they will tell you, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ Right? Allahu Samad. Right? But you ask this, a priest or a pastor, right? Give me one, one verse about Trinity. Trinity is the main belief in Christianity. He said, oh, okay, I will look. SubhanAllah. See the difference? We know our book by heart, just like this. So he went and he looked, then he brought me a verse. Honestly, I didn't realize. You know why? You will know why now. I read the whole Bible cover to cover. It was very, very tiring. Anyway, I read it. And I summarized it. And I made all the similarities and differences and took all the notes. Inshallah, we'll publish it when I have a chance. He brought me a verse. I said, let me see. I, I knew all those numbers. I forgot. When you don't practice, you forget. John. John 5. John 5, 17. Something like that. I, I forgot. I knew the number very well. Anyway. I told him, let me see. I told him, let me see my version. He said, look. It's not in my version. I said, no, no, let me see. Look, it's not in my version. Look what the, the, I have a footnote here. Look what they say. On the footnotes they say, some, few, look, few, very late manuscripts, some, or few, few, very late manuscripts, is the manuscript that they depend on to take the Bible. Add this verse. And in the heaven there are three witnesses, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is it see? Some very late manuscripts, they add this verse. How can you trust this book? The main verse about Trinity, about your belief, is added, is not here. SubhanAllah, when I was there, I had a a copy in, in Spanish. It's very famous there. They give it a lot. It's orange. It has orange, red, red and white color. And that verse was there in Spanish. I also looked at it. I learned some Spanish. Anyway, I will tell them these verses in Spanish also. Before I went out, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped me to go out, they started giving them a new version in Spanish. It was blue, white and blue. Those who were there, they know this very well. So I saw it with one of the brothers. He was talking on the phone. So I told him, can I just look? So I looked at it. And guess what? That blue virgin 
is called Nueva Internacional ver version, version. The new international version. A new international version. That verse is not there. They took it away. This in itself, if a person really wants to really follow the truth, he will know right away this book has been played with. So I took the blue book and I started showing them. Some of them got upset, but some of them, they converted. Some of them converted. When you see the truth and you really follow the truth, you want the truth, you cannot but realize as many of their scholars, they acknowledge that this book has been changed. So, can this be compared with the Quran? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his blessings, he blessed the Muslims that he guaranteed he will do it. But in the Quran, Allah tells us about the, the other books. What the, who knows the ayah? بِمَسْتُحْفِظُوا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَكَانُوا عَلَيْهِ شُهَدَاءً إِنَّ أَنزَلَ التَّوْرَاةَ فِيهَا هُدًا وَنُورٌ right? يَحْكُمُ بِهَا النَّبِيُّونَ الَّذِينَ أَسْلَمُوا لِلَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالرَّبَّانِيُّونَ وَالْأَحْبَارُ بِمَا اسْتُحْفِظُوا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَكَانُوا عَلَيْهِ شُهَدَاءَ Allah entrusted them with their books but they were not able to preserve it and maybe if he did the same to us we would also have not been able to preserve it to preserve it but it's Allah's blessings that he enabled us. He guaranteed he will preserve it and he enabled us and gave us the tools to do it. So, one of those reasons, guys, by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to preserve the Quran is, or one of the ways is, the Torah was revealed just uh, as you know in, in some tablets right away. The Holy Quran, how many years? 23 years. This topic, guys, this topic. I had one of the fifth graders in the summer program, she asked me this question. How do we know the Quran did not change? Every single one of you has to know in details, in details, how this book reached us. And what are the proofs that it is preserved? What are the proofs? You have to learn this in detail and know very well, you have to know very well the history of this holy book. You have to know the history, how it reached us, how it was revealed, how it was combined, why the, uh, the third Khalifa burnt some copies of the Quran. And some orientalists and some scholars who, who attack Islam, they know these th things very well and they know the narrations and the hadith very well. So you have to know how to answer those things and how to explain to others. And this will strengthen your connection with the Holy Quran. And this will help you to have more certainty and to help others also and guide them to, their, to the truth that will lead to their happiness in this world and the next world. So of those reasons is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran 23 years. That enabled the Muslims to do what? Few ayat will be revealed this day. Few ayat will be, few verses will be revealed after one week. Few verses will be revealed this way. So they're having what? Enough time to learn them, write them down, memorize them, act upon them, teach them. See? See Allah's mercy? And not only that, the thing that made them memorize them also very well and connect to them very well is the, is the fact that most of the verses came as solutions to problems or answers to questions. Most of the verses came as what? Take down these notes. I, I did not prepare them like this way. I did not even write them. Most of the verses came what? As answers to questions or solutions to problems and directions to the Muslims in their, in, in their some, in some of their confuse, confusing times. For example, the Muslims won the Battle of Badr when they were defending their land and trying to take their right back and they had some booties and spoils of war they didn't know what to do, how to divide the booties so they came to the Prophet ﷺ they ask you about the booties of war 
قل say to them, O Muhammad, قل الأنثال لله والرسول. The answer came how to distribute in Surah Al-Anfal. See, يسألونك عن الأهلة. They ask you about the crescents. قل هي مواقيت للناس والحج. Say they are to give people their timings and to guide them about the times of Hajj and the and the months, etc. See, yes, Aluna, they ask you, they ask you, they ask you. And many issues, you know, many stories, like the story of Sayyidah Aisha and when they accused her of the sin and how the ayat came. It's amazing. So when you have a problem and the solution comes from the Creator, you'll be very connected to the solution and to the answer and you will learn it and memorize it. Do you understand? That is one of the of the very important reasons that enabled Muslims to learn the Quran very well. Now, this is a long topic. We're going to talk about it, inshallah. Let's finish the line letter by letter. So, لِأَنَّهُ بِهِ means with it, الْإِلَاهُ أَنْزَلَ The Ilah, the God revealed it or sent it down. أَنْزَلَ Why he said أَنْزَلَ with an alif? What is the verb originally, Ya Sheikh? What is the verb? Show us there on the screen. What is the verb? It's Anzala. Is, does Anzala have an alif? No, but he said Anzala. Why? If you, this verb Anzala, if you read it like this, it means two people revealed it. Huh? Two people. Anzala. When someone, when you're talking about one person, what do you say? What do you say? You say Anzala. Two people, you say Anzala. More than two people, what do you say? Who knows? Wow of the plural. Huh? Anzalu. And if they are women, you say, who knows? You put the noon of the women. Anzalna. Uh, sorry, Anzalna. Anzalna. And if you say Anzalna, that is the, the, the royal we. Or could be the we also. It depends on the context. Got it? So here, why he said Anzala? Of course, he's saying, means Allah Anzala. Al Ilah is one. Anzala, it should be Anzala. So he released the Fatha with the Alif. And this is called the Alif al Itlaq. I, I call it Alif of release because he released the Fatha. Means he stretched it with an Alif. Why? To keep the rhythm. Got it? Okay. So now you tell me, what does Bihi mean? Bihi, we said with it. So because with the God, the Ilah, sent it down with it. Bihi. With it. With what? He's saying a blind tajweed is necessary and whoever does not correct his recitation of the Quran is a sinner because with it, God revealed it. With what? Is the class too early that you're still, still asleep? With it means with tajweed. He's telling you, implementing Tajweed is necessary, etc, etc, etc. Then, because with it, God revealed it. Revealed what? Revealed the Qur'an. With it, with Tajweed. Clear? So, with it means what, ya sister? With Tajweed. Bihi means what? With Tajweed. Bihi, with Tajweed. Okay. لِأَنَّهُ بِهِ الْإِلَاهُ أَنزَلَ وَهَكَذَا and thus and this way وَهَكَذَا مِنْهُ from Allah from Him from Him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْهُ means from who? means from Him from who? from Allah مِنْهُ إِلَيْنَا to us وَصَلَا arrived reached and this is how it reached us from him. Tamam? And this is how it reached us from him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. How it reached us from him. With tajweed. How? This is what we're gonna explain. This is what, how we're gonna explain. So, لِأَنَّهُ بِهِ الْإِلَاهُ أَنزَلَ وَهَكَذَا مِنْهُ إِلَيْنَا وَصَلَ Yalla, who can tell me? One last time before we move on. لِأَنَّهُ As you can see. لِأَنَّهُ means because the matter is that 
with it means with tajweed Allah sent it down and this and this way in this way it reached us minhu minhu from him means from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us arrived or reached is this clear okay now we're gonna take and learn the details of this line how it was how it reached us how the Quran reached us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tajweed that is what we're gonna learn now inshallah how many times how many minutes we have here 30 okay I'd like to, to mention to you uh, what Mullah Ali Al-Qari, rahimahullah, one of the Han great Hanafi scholars, what he said, he said the same thing about what we mentioned about the ruling of learning the Quran. He says, a Muslim has to apply all tajweed rules. It's wajib, he's saying, wujuba. The, all the tajweed rules that it changes the meaning and it's very preferable to learn all the tajweed rules that will improve and make the meaning and make the word sounds better and this is why we call them what decorative decorative rules and attributes is that clear then he says as for the hidden lahim al lahn al khafi we cannot make it make uh, make it make avoiding it as an individual obligation because that will make many Muslims fall in sin or consider, be considered sinners because they don't know those hidden uh, hidden types of mistakes that do not change the meanings. Okay, let's start as we mentioned first. The Holy Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed the Holy Quran. From where? Revealed the Holy Quran. Uh, he had it in al lawh al mahfud the sacred tablet. And we know Allah subhanahu wa We know the Holy Quran is Allah's words, Allah's speech. Kalamullah. Kalamullah. Wa in ahdu min al mushrikeen astajaraka fa ajirhu hatta yasma'a kalamullah. If one of the pagans seek refuge with you, even when you're in the battle, give him refuge. So that he can hear the words or the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ahl sunnah as we will learn in, in al kharid al-Bahiyya, inshaAllah, Allah's speech uh, doesn't mean in any way that it is sounds and letters. As you, you see some, you watch some videos by non-Muslims, such, uh, for example, like Christians, and they put like, they put how Allah is speaking and they put like the voice of someone else. He's speaking like, uh, come, come here, oh Adam, do what, I don't know. So they put like, astaghfirullah. For us Muslims, we believe Allah's speech, just like his all other attributes, is not like anything. Just like his hearing and his sight, he sees, but he doesn't have eyes. He hears, but he doesn't have ears. Right? He has all perfection. And he knows and sees and hears everything, but he doesn't need tools like us. Okay? This is the agreed upon belief of Ahl Sunnah as Imam al Tahawi, one of the great Salaf scholars, mentioned in his Tahawiyyah. And as we will see in Al Kharid al Bahiyyah, inshaAllah. So the same with Allah's speech or the Holy Quran. It's not created things, it's not letters and words and sounds. No. It is different from all types of speech uh, sometimes you speak you speak within yourself right you say I said to myself even though there are no sounds right or no sometimes you said I sometimes someone speaks to you in the dream and, and in reality you did not hear sounds there are no sounds but you have the meaning inside you right right and there are many groups for this anyway the point is Allah's speech is not like sounds and letters 
because these sounds and letters they are created they are successive and all of Allah's attributes are are eternal nothing of Allah's attributes are created you understand and this is why in the time of Sayyidina Ahmad ibn Hanbal anhu, some people they came and they said the Quran is created and they tortured him and he will never accept their statements because they will reach if they prove the Quran is created this means one of Allah's attributes is created then Allah is not a creator at all because if one of his attributes is created means he himself is created so he's not a creator and this is why Sayyidina Ahmad anhu, and all of Ahl Sunnah they stood very firm and they supported their argument with logical and rational proofs in addition to the proofs from the Quran itself and from the Sunnah itself that Allah's speech is not created and it's eternal like any like all of his other attributes so this Quran Allah recorded it in the sacred tablet then he rebuilt it on the night of Al-Qadr, the night of honor to some to a place in the lower heaven called Baytul Izza, the house of glory this is what Sayyidina Allah Ibn Abbas mentioned then from that house of glory, a sister from that place, it was being revealed during how many years? 23 years according to what? to the occasions got it? So now, we know it started with the cave of Hira. Now the Prophet وسلم, will not go to more details how the Wahi was revealed, etc, etc. And how it started, ila akhiri. But what we will learn, two things. You have two routes, guys, to prove that the Holy Quran is literally from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two routes. The first route is the is from the Quran you start from the Quran itself you start from the Quran itself and the second route you start from the universe the first route we have to prove that the Holy Quran was that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago is the same one that we have today so you have to prove the connection from the Prophet to us is correct connection and there were there was no change during that transmission but that's not enough who can tell me why because someone might tell you yes I believe you prove to me the Quran you're reading is the same one that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam read but he doesn't believe he's a prophet but he says well maybe Muhammad himself wrote it or someone taught it to him or who took it or he took it from somewhere else other than Allah, that Allah did not reveal to him and he is not a prophet. Then what do we have to prove? That the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet. And he was honest and truthful and trustworthy and that he could never ever have written or authored this Quran and that he must have got it from the Creator. Did you get it? So this route has how many steps? Two. What is the first step? What is the first step? The to prove what? The connection. <coughs> that from the Prophet وسلم, until us, no change. It's the same Quran. And that's what we're going to focus on in, in the coming class. What is the second step? To the universe. Speak loud. Through the universe. No, no. The second step of the first trout. Oh. Is it enough to prove that we're reading the same Quran that you Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam read? You prove that he's a prophet. You have to prove that he was a prophet, and what he received is a revelation from Allah. Is not from someone else. Is not magic. Is not from uh, a non-Muslim person. Is not from his own mind. Got it? These are the two steps. Now let's start with this step. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam received it from Allah subhanahu wa taala. All the historians. The historians, non-Muslims, non-Muslim historians, they realize and they know that the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was honest and trustworthy person. And he never lied to others. And that people used to entrust him with their treasures. And even his own enemies, 
the Meccans who did not believe in him, they acknowledged that he is truthful. And when he came to them and told them, do you know if I tell you there's an army coming from behind this mountain, will you believe me? What did they say? Who knows, what did they say? They say, we never heard you lying. So this is this, you will believe me, we will believe you. Then they disbelieved in him. Right? So the, the, his own enemies, they knew and they believed he was trustworthy, an honest person. And he did not know how to read or write, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is not uh, a disgrace to him. Exactly the opposite. That is a big, a big blessing and a big merit for him. Because he did not need how to read or write because Allah taught him all types of knowledge. Why would he need to write or, or read? And Allah mentions this clearly in the Holy Quran. No one can argue about this. I know some people, they say, no, no, he, did. he knew how to read or write. But the whole process وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُوا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَلَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكِ إِذَا لَرْتَابَ الْمُبُطِلُونَ You never used to read a book before it or to write it with your own hands. If you did, then those who, who make doubts would have made that claim, would have made that you wrote it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him and chose him not to read or write. And he doesn't need that because Allah gave him all types of knowledge. Right? So this is another thing. How would a person who didn't know how to read or write bring such, such a masterpiece, if you like? Such an amazing literature work, if you like. Such, a, such an amazing literary uh, piece that, is, that, that outweighs all types of, of, of poetry and prose that the Arabs have ever known. And they, they admitted it. You know, many of the Sahaba, before they became, before they converted, when they hear it, they were amazed, right? They were amazed. They will hide just to hear it from the Prophet ﷺ. They were amazed with the Sayyidina Umar anhu, when he heard just some verses, he, he said, this cannot be from a human being. So, this is a brief summary of the proofs that the Prophet Muhammad never could have never ever wrote it from his own mind and he must have received it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he was trustworthy and if a person doesn't lie to people and doesn't lie about, lie about people, how would he lie about the creator of people? And he used to be known for his great character and morals for years, for 40 years, right or no? He lived among them 40 years and they, he, they knew him very well where he went and where he lived and what did he do in all of his life. You know, they have a small town so everyone knows everyone. And everyone knows everyone's details. So they, they knew his trustworthiness. And when he migrated, what did they do? What did he, why did he leave Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu? Why did he leave his cousin Ali in Mecca? Why? To return the trust. To return the trust, to return the trust to people. Some people, even though they did not believe he's a prophet, they would entrust him with their treasures. And when he migrated, running away from, from their persecution and following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he kept his cousin to return those trusts to people. Look at his amazing character, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sahabi ajma'i. Yet, some people, they just follow their own desires and they don't want to see the truth. And Allah mentions this in the Qur'an. What's the ayah? فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ They don't, they know you're truthful. But the wrongdoers and those who have wronged themselves, they deny out of arrogance and out of, of stubbornness and just to follow their own desires. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ وَلَكِنَّ وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ So, also, also, that's one way. Now we will continue how the Qur'an reached, this is where we're going to start right away, inshallah, next class. How we have the Qur'an from the Prophet sallallahu until our time without any change. And how do we know that we read it like the way he read it? 
And how do you know the, the copies that are written? The copies that are written are the same copies that they had. That's what we're going to, inshallah, cover in the next time. But let me summarize for you the other route. The other route is, you look at, you look at the universe. You, look, you reflect on the signs in the universe and you reflect on the Quran itself. You come right away to the Quran. This is a book in your hand. You don't study its history. You come right away to the book. Okay? Excuse me. So you read this book and you see. You will find that this book is universal. That this book complies with science. That this book prophesies a lot, a lot of scientific facts 1400 years ago. Who could bring such a book? Who can tell? How can a person like our beloved Prophet وسلم, who did not know how to read or write? In, in, and that's, that's again a merit for him. Don't think that this is, uh, no, he is disgracing. No, no. Allah mentions this in the Holy Quran. And, and the Prophet doesn't need to read or write. Allah taught him. إِقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمْ أَلَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمْ As Allah taught others with a pen, He will teach you without a pen, without needing to read or write. صلى الله عليه وسلم. How can a person like him, صلى الله عليه وسلم, who did not like go to school or learn or, or did not have like scientific knowledge or whatever of these things, how can he describe the the stages of the development of the embryo 1400 years ago how and now just now like the the most famous canadian or american embryologist his name is keith they say keith or keith keith, keith moore keith moore he his books are taught in the in the universities around the world his books in his books on embryology. When he read the verses about embryology and the ayat, the hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, he submitted and he converted. He said, it's impossible. We just know these, these descriptions of the embryo and the development of the embryo could have never been known by someone who lived 1400 years ago. Impossible. It must be from the Creator. And he converted. And he wrote a book about علم الأجنة في القرآن والسنة the embryology in Quran and Sunnah he's not a naive person he's the, the, one of the most famous embryologists in the world and his books are taught in universities this is one example some others who, who read about the verses about the oceans in the Quran the, first, the verses about the mountains I told you right about the Danish brother who converted because one of the verses about the mountains in the Quran the verses about the mountains in the Quran, who told the Prophet ﷺ that these mountains, they are like pigs, like pigs, right? They fix the earth and keep it stable just like the pigs keep the tent fixed and stable. And who taught him that, that the pigs, right? You know how the pig, the pig look like, right? This is the ground, let's say this is the pig, right? Right? Describing the mountains, these are, you see the mountains like this, right? But in reality, the mountains are like this. The part of the mountain that you cannot see is bigger than the part that you can see. Just like the big of the tent, the big of the tent, the watad. Alam naj'ali al-arda mihada wal jibala awtada. Look at this word, this word, this word is a miracle in itself. Allah is saying, did not we make the mountains like pigs? The pig, what does the pig do? It fixes the tent, and this is what the mountains do for the earth. It keeps it stable, as Allah mentions in the many ayat. Antamida bikum, right? Antamida bikum, it means the Allah, in order not to shake with you. And also the mountains, the pig, look at the part of the pig that's under the ground, is bigger. Same thing with the mountain. Who told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about this? Huh? Who? This cannot be from a human being. This must be from who? From the Creator. This verse made a, a, an atheist convert. 
And those verses about the embryo made one of the biggest sciences, greatest sciences, not biggest, right? Greatest sciences, scientists. It made him convert, right? So the truth is clear. These are just two quick examples, guys. You got the, the second route. Second route is what? Reflect on this book without studying its history. Look at this book. See, the, see what it tells. Not only this, guys, about family, about society, the values it teaches. The distributing, the, the law it carries, the, the, the literary miracles, scientific miracles, the, the amazing way how it is put, how it is organized, how it is ordered. This is like, as, as, as mentioned in one of the hadith, لا تنقضي عجائبه the, Quran, the wonders of the Quran do not end. And the more we, you study and you reflect on it, you will see. You cannot but acknowledge and admit and believe that it must be from the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the speech and follow its best. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi wa rabbil alayhi.